Hey guys, thank you for stopping in to check out this video all about holiday eating and how to approach the holidays and all the food that usually encompasses them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you may be watching this as we head into Easter this weekend, or maybe it's a different holiday down the line, but regardless, this can help you learn how to approach the holidays in a very healthy way um, that isn't going to ruin everything that you had been working for and also hopefully helping you to enjoy the holidays and what they're truly about a little bit more this year. So I'm going to bring up a little slideshow that I created and just kind of walk everyone through it together and kind of give you um, some additional pieces that you wouldn't get from just reading it on your own. So what not to do? This is what we don't want to do. Probably most of us have done this at some point, including myself, 100%. I used to go into the holidays with the mindset of, okay, I only get to enjoy these foods for a few days, so I have to try everything and eat as much as I can while I can. That was followed by me stuffing my face with three plates of food and dessert, and then after the party, I'd take a plate of leftovers home and usually eat most of it before I even went to bed. True story, I've been there. I have been one that used to restrict and binge. Um, and it's just not a healthy way to approach the holidays. It's not healthy for your body. It's not healthy for your mindset. Nothing about it is good. So we want to approach the upcoming holidays in a very different way. And we're going to go through that and I can help you out. Why you don't need to do this? You never have to feel like that again because you have forever to enjoy as much holiday food as you want. And we need to really get that ingrained in our mindset. This isn't going to be the last time that we get to enjoy foods because we're starting our journey in a very flexible way of dieting moving forward. And we're not going to go back to old diet trends that forces you to restrict certain types of foods um, and in turn causes you to have that negative relationship with food. So no foods should be off limits. You should be able to enjoy foods and not feel guilty for it. So the beauty of macros is the flexibility that they offer. You can enjoy holiday foods the day of, plus the leftovers the day after, and knowing that the next holiday that comes up, when grandma makes her famous pie, you're going to get to enjoy it again down the road. You don't need to worry about stuffing your face as much as possible during the holidays because the diet you're in is not restricting you from eating another serving of the green bean casserole. Or if your grandma makes some famous deviled eggs like Brian does, you get those too. So step one in approaching the holidays is to be mindful. Sometimes when our relationship with food is not at 100%, it's easy to feel like you have to eat everything. Even if you don't even really want it, you just know that it's your one chance to do it. If you're going to be starting your diet on Monday, you may be overindulging over the weekend. Um, but just be mindful of what you really want and what you enjoy. If it's not a hell yes, it might not be worth it. It's definitely not worth it to eat a bunch of stuff you don't like just because you feel pressure to, whether that's pressure from family, pressure from yourself. Because like I said, if you're starting that diet on Monday, you want to make sure that you're basically eating as much food as you can because if you're not following something like flexible dieting um, and kind of developing the sustainable way of eating, more than likely you're going to fall back to a super low caloric type diet um, or one that's restricting a bunch of different foods that you love and following more of a meal plan or only you know getting a list of certain foods that you're able to eat for that diet. That's just not something that I'm about. The next step when you approach the holidays is to just start small. Don't feel like you have to grab everything on your first plate. Pick your favorites on your first round, but choose a portion that's smaller than what you think you want. So almost think of it as like a little sampling of the things that you really do like. When we're excited and starving, it's easy to dump heaping portions on our plate that we don't actually need. But once it's on there, we always try to finish it. And that can go back to the way that you were raised, whether it's finishing your plate, you know, even if you didn't choose your portion sizes, um, the food will still be there when you're done. So if you do want to go up for seconds on something that you truly enjoyed, that should always be an option for you. But don't feel like you have to, you know, make this heaping plate on your first round up of things that you want. Instead, choose the things that you want, but just in smaller little sample size portions. The third step is to prioritize your water, protein, and veggies. So fill your tummy up with all the stuff that's good for you. Um, not saying that you shouldn't eat the other foods, but prioritizing those three things is going to help you feel fuller. It's going to help you not feel as bloated, and it's going to help you maintain your progress by hitting your protein intake. Um, and always drink a full glass of water before your plate or before you even come to the party. That way you have a little something in your stomach. You're not going in super thirsty, super hungry. Um, and of course, it just helps with the digestion process. And then always have a solid protein source and veggies on all of the food plates, even that one that you really wanted where you're sampling, um, try to add a little 
protein in there. So whether it's a piece of ham or a piece of turkey or something like that, that's always really important as well. Um, step four, I had fun with this one. Stop, wait a minute, hold my cup, pour some liquor in it. If you know that song, we can be friends. Um, okay, but seriously, take a 10 minute break in between plates. So you're in no rush to eat. Oftentimes when we grab another plate right away, our bodies haven't had even the chance to tell us that we're full. Then we start another plate and end up stuffed as shit. And that's no bueno feeling. So make sure you're allowing your body time to process, kind of savor those different flavors in your mouth, spend some time with your family chatting about, maybe grab another glass of water. And then if you do feel like you do want some more, go ahead and go up and grab some. And then say F you to the couch. Um, I am having a little uh, potty mouth, I guess you can say today, but all for the all for the fun of it. Um, nothing against couches, but all we want to do after eating a shit ton is sit on the couch the rest of the night, which is the worst thing that you can do. So to improve the digestion, reduce bloating, we want to get up and move. You can walk around the neighborhood, go to the mall if it's open, um, go on a trail or a park that has you know a path or something, or invite your family that's there for the holidays on a quick walk or stroller. Take the kids out and go play with them. There's so many different options that you can do to just get your body moving as you process those foods. So that's it for the slideshow. I do want to chat a little bit about um, my clients and what they should do when they approach the holidays specifically. And it really just depends on where you're at in your journey. And there's a few different ways that you can look at this. Um, if you are someone <clears throat> that are is tracking macros, you can kind of pre-plan ahead of time if you know what's going to be served. Um, throw a few of your favorite sides in there um, into your MyFitnessPal diary. Um, if you know they're going to be there, but if not, you can take, take a day and have a meal without tracking it. Just use these different things that I have in here as far as being mindful, prioritizing protein, um, and just allow yourself a day or, you know, a period of time where you're not tracking, but you're not using that as an excuse to binge and go hog wild. Because remember with flexible dieting, you're able to eat whatever food you want when you want, as long as you're making sure it balances throughout the day. And that's the beauty of this, that no food is off limits. We're just learning how to incorporate the foods that we love in a sustainable way that's going to help us reach our goals and then maintain those goals once we have them. So if you have any particular questions as far as how to approach the holidays, um, you can always reach out to me individually. But generally speaking, what I have my clients do is just take a meal away from tracking and enjoy the time. And for a majority of us that are starting this journey, it's typically because we have fallen victim to the trend diet, to the restricting eating, to the negative mindset. And instead of challenging, challenging yourself with tracking during the holidays or during your holiday dinner, um, I want you to challenge yourself with taking a look at your mindset and how you feel when you approach the holiday. So if you are someone that has already asked about what am I going to do for Easter, you know, or, you know, the holiday coming up a week, two weeks, three weeks out, this is going to be a great, great thing for you to be aware of. What is your mindset going in? Do you have that anxious feeling? We want to reverse that and truly look at holidays as what they're intended to be. It's a time to get around family, time to spend that time together to celebrate whatever the holiday is, you know, whether it's um, based on your religion or a family tradition. So really make that a priority this year instead of worrying about, you know, how am I going to continue my diet and enjoy this dinner with my family? This one dinner, whatever holiday's coming up, it's not going to be detrimental to your goals. And in fact, by doing it this way, I am a strong believer that it's going to help you be more successful long term because you're changing your mindset around how you see food and how you approach foods in different situations like this. So I'm just going to leave you at that. If you have any specific questions for me, or if you aren't a client and want to learn more about Evolve with Sierra and the programs that we offer, you can always reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram, or you can send an email to Sierra at Evolve with Sierra.com. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy whatever holiday is coming up. For us, it's Easter coming up next week. And if you have any questions, go ahead and reach out. We'll talk with you later.